Sister uh, Barbara, I think Sister Latoya was absent too. And we just want to read just one verse from here. Can you turn to Acts chapter uh, 28? Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. You guys should have a copy of this already. But I'm going to uh, put it up on line. So you can have this for your records. Mom, I don't think you were here either. The rest of you, if you lost your copy, I get, um, I just pray that what was necessary for this class. I'm going to miss the first page. I will get you a copy, Mom. And we're going to read, um, turn to Acts 20, 28. Acts chapter 28. And we'll pick up the last two verses. Shemar, when you have it, Shemar. Let me give you a second. I don't care about what you read, brother. Friends. Okay. Shema, everybody. So we're going to read Acts chapter 28. And I, can you start us off at verse 30 to 31? And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came into him preaching the kingdom of Yahuwah and teaching those things which concern Yeshua HaMashiach with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So the backstory, you can read Acts, start Acts 27, and Paul is arrested by his own homeboys. The, the, the Jews he used to run with have now turned on him because he has been awakened by Yeshua, and now Paul, who used to persecute the, belief, the Israelites who believed in Yeshua, the Romans started calling them Christians. We are the first Christians. So I don't have a problem with the term Christian just as long as you delineate which Christian I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian who believe in Messiah and the Torah because that's what my king did. So Paul was once persecuting us. Now his homeboys says, Paul, we're sending you to Rome to be crucified because you're preaching against Moses. Mm -hmm. So when you get a chance, read the backstory for yourself. So... Paul wins his case in Rome, and he stays in Rome for two years, preaching the kingdom. Now, go back to Acts 27. Go back to Acts 27, and uh, I'm just going to point out a few cities. Acts 27, Shemai. Shemai. So, my, my um, subtitle here, The Prisoner's Cell for Italy. And... <coughs> I'm going to read off a couple of the cities that they went, they left Judea, taking Paul to Rome. And it says, verse 2, entering into a ship of Aramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. One of uh, Aratarikers, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. The next day, we touched at Zidon. So Zidon, they, they touched Zidon. Verse 4, go down to verse 4. We sailed under Cyprus. That's Kittim, where Zephyr was at. Go down to verse 5. We sailed over the Sea of Sicilia and Pamphylia and came to Myra, a city of Asia. Verse 6. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy. He put us therein. So you finish this on your own, you'll, you'll trek Paul's journey into Rome. And what I want to point out is they become shipwrecked. At verse 39, they got shipwrecked by a storm. And the people put them up. And... I'm skimming here, going off my notes. There was one verse, I guess I should stay on my notes, huh? But if you read that whole chapter, Paul says, and the brethren, we met the brethren. And it's like, in a Christian church, we learn that brethren means your Christian brother. But in the first century, Paul calls them brethren because they're Israelites. And it's further proof that dark people were all over Europe 
because we were scattered by the Greeks. The Rome, the Romans have taken over the Greek populate the Greek territories, but the Greeks have already scattered us throughout all these cities. So when Paul is on his way to Rome, he they get they land at an island for some time to regroup, and he he, he calls them brethren. But they're not brethren in the Christian sense. They're brethren because Paul knew they were scattered Israelites. So it's just further proof that dark people were all over Europe way before um, the, the, like the, the Caucasian Europeans. So it'll come to me. It might be in my notes. So what we're going to do now, we finished Acts 20, 28. You finished Acts 28 and 31. So somebody turn to Acts chapter 29, verse 1. Turn to Acts 29, verse 1. Oh, it's not in your book. Y'all can't find Acts 29? Anyone have Acts 29? Another reason why people, uh, the canon, the canon, they have butchered our records. They have burnt our records. So you don't, you can't be so you know, subjective with your research. So what I passed out is a copy of Acts chapter 29. It's been verified, it's been checked, but please do your own research. And I got it on the screen. All we need is the first, the first verse here. And remember Cheddar Man, where's Cheddar Man from? Britannia, right? So uh, verse, this is Acts 29 and verse, let me make it dirty because I can't even see it. I'm I got a sheet right here. You got a sheet? Yeah. All right. It gives you the background of this, how it was found, and how it was sold. Uh, why well, I can't find? The beginning of this. Oh, first of all, I'm sorry. Can y'all see this, the ones who don't have copies? We're going to read Acts 29, verse 1 through 2. Shemai? Shemai. Shemai. Read. And Paul, full of the blessings of Mashiach, and abounding in the spirit, departed out of Rome, determining to go to Spain, for he had long time purpose to journey thitherward, and was minded also to go from thence into Britain. For he had heard in Phoenicia that certain of the children of Israel, about the time of their Assyrian captivity, had escaped by sea to the isles of far off, as spoken by the prophets, and called by the Romans, Britain. Why did Paul want to go to Spain and Britain? Israelites. He knew our records. He knew we were been scattered. Northern Israel constitute, uh, is known as Ephraim. That's the ten tribes. Y'all was so ticked off by them, y'all says, I'm casting y'all out of here. Way before us, Judah was cast off. So when you go to 1 Kings and 2 Kings, our northern family was been scattered by Syria. Paul knew our history. He says, I pleaded my case in Rome. Y'all kept me. Y'all saved my life in Rome. Now I'm over in this part of the world because for us, Italy is the West. We're from the East. We're Asians. Anybody do that? Yeah. We're Asian Orientals. Now we think it means China, man. Their curriculums have beguiled us. Asian or Oriental by the Greeks just mean people of the East. They're from where the sun rises. So we're from the East. Canaan is East. So Paul says, while well, I'm over here in the West, I'm going to go sail to Spain and Britannia because I heard Israelites are there. So that lines up with Cheddar Man being the ancient Brits. You see how we've got to run this down and become Bereans? Yes. Praise the Most High. Hallelujah. So Esau or Zepho people has taken Britannia not because they want the land. I want to get back at Jacob. And it matched the curse of Deuteronomy where y'all told us, if you forsake my law, everywhere you go, I'm going to put a sword behind you. And then, isn't it befitting that the sword that's coming for us is from our own brother? Y'all words got fell when I wrote it, right? So, and again, this image here, if you go back and read Acts 27, all the cities that Paul's mentioning, this line right here, this is where Paul... This is where Paul sailed from. They left Jerusalem, went to the ship. Here's Zidon. We came to Zidon in Phoenicia, or the, or the Philistines. We came around Cyprus, the Sea of Pamphylia, 
All this is verified history. This is where they went. They got shipwrecked over there in Malta, finally made it to Syracuse, which is in Sicily, and then went up in Europe. So this is verified. Our books are verified. Amen? Amen. So now that we know ancient Europe, which includes Rome, is full of Hebrews, Esau included, how did they get white? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, Mishnika. We got to do this. We got to do this. Speaking of cheddar, man. Our first question on that one map you had what talked about um, what Edom dominated that world map. Mm -hmm. Everything in pink, is that what he dominated? Yep. Okay. Only the white countries was a country that uh, Britain didn't didn't uh, overtake. Okay. Mark on Cheddar man. And the, the images comes up. All the images comes up of ancient Britain. You know the iron in this? Here's Socrates right here. Do I see Socrates, the so-called Greek? They're Hebrews. They know this. Why do you put a... They make them white. Why does it look? Prince Harry. To show the contrast. To show that these people are lying. These people are not original. Okay. Here's the ancient Britain. And here's the modern who took over. To show the contrast, uh, I know I put it in the folder. I thank the most high for the person who made the rendition of Cheddar Man. At least had integrity. Yeah. When they, when they did uh, Cleopatra, she was Snow White. I mean, when they did the rendition like they did her, they, it, was, it was a white woman. I'm like, so I'm just, I'm just thankful that he told the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheddar man, fine may not be true. Oh, this is, they, they always de they always debunk. Be fair, read their, their rebuttal. Read their rebuttal, because they always try to refute stuff. Uh, what the one I found? Is this? Oh, they always try to read. Is this the one? Here we go. I apologize for all the ads. I told you we looking for glasses, so all these ads coming up. <laughs> So, yeah. I'm going to read you some snippets here. Daddy's got the article. Ah. All right, the first modern Britons who lived about 10,000 years ago had dark to black skin 
A groundbreaking DNA analysis of Britain's oldest complete skeleton has revealed. Cherry mm. Man's origin and appearance because he lived shortly after the first settlers crossed from continental Europe to Britain at the end of the last ice age. People of white British ancestry alive today are descendants of this population. It was initially assumed that Cherry Man had pale skin and fair hair, but his DNA paints a different picture, strongly suggesting he had blue eyes and very dark.